Terrence tells me the clock tower rings, so that means it is time to start our regular meeting with a roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Here. Commissioner Barwick. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Stecklin. Here. Mayor Absher. Here. Ed Davis, would you lead us in the pledge? Okay, Ed has an announcement to make relative to Veterans on Parade this year, I believe, right? Yes, Mayor. Thank you very much for having me and, and for having me first on your list. And I thank you every year, so we're going to have a committee meeting this evening. Um, as many of you know, Veterans on Parade has been around a, a long time. Uh, something we didn't anticipate would last this long, but we're on our 17th year this year. So, uh, you know, the committee that I work with, we're proud to have this parade here in Marion and to represent all of Southern Illinois. You know, last year we faced a, <laughs> that was probably the toughest year I ever had with this parade, with the pandemic, you know, in, in terms of making sure we could have it. You know, we had uh, several of our committee members were against it, but uh, we had the majority that wanted to have it. And we found the ways by working on protocols in, in accordance with CDC guidelines. And uh, we had a heck of a parade, wouldn't you say, Mayor? I think so. You know, City Council, we had a really good parade. Uh, this year, we're not going to institute any protocols whatsoever. If people want to wear a mask, feel free. This is America. You want to keep social distance? Again, feel free. But we will not put that upon the, uh, the participants nor the spectators. This is uh, America and we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it. Um, evident by we have some protesters out there that uh, that's why guys like me and women like me fought to make sure we can do what we want to do in this country. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not something I agree with, but again, hey, you can do what you want if you live in this country. And that's why I love this country. I love this parade because it recognizes men and women in a couple of ways. Number one, who have spent two, three, four years, and in some cases as much as 30 to 35 years serving their country and being away from their families. And their families have also suffered. You know, they've sacrificed a lot too. When you, you talk to any veteran who's been deployed you know, three, four, five times in, in a 10 to 12 year period, talk to their families. You'll get a bird's eye view and an eye open view of what these people have been through. And these are American people. Uh, lastly is that we honor our first responders who do a heck of a job in this country. You know, I've, I've been, being in the service, I've been to third world countries, being in business, I've been to third world countries, South America, I've been to Asia. I've seen how people live and how people try to survive. I don't care what you say. I was so happy when I got out of the service to come back to the good old US of A because this is the best country in the world. We'll have the parade this year. It's, it's gonna be a special time because we're having it on September the 11th, which as many of you know, is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. I have a connection to that day for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was born in New York, but I'm proud to say I'm a Midwest guy with a Brooklyn accent. Um, I also worked on the World Trade Center for several months when I got out of the Navy, when I came back from Vietnam. So, you know, uh, who would have thought that would have ever happened? But we don't want this to happen anymore. We don't want to be faced with losing over 3,000 lives in one day in this country on our own soil. We can get along and we can do a lot of things in this country. But the thing is, just remember you're all Americans here. That's the bottom line, no matter what happens. We'll have the parade. The parade will start at 10 a.m. Uh, we've got a couple of things Mr. Moke is working on, the city is working on with me. And if they come to fruition, we'll have a couple of special things to announce later on. But I employ 
all veterans, men and women, come out and be a part of this is your day to be recognized by family, friends, neighbors, and Southern Illinois as a whole. Come out and be a part of something that is good and patriotic in this country. We just need more of it. Okay? Any questions? Can I answer any questions? And we'll start at 10 o'clock. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. We'll start at 10 a.m. And um, we'll still start this way. And the yes, we'll be starting. We have two staging areas. The first staging area for most of the vehicles, we'll, we're going to decide that tonight at the committee meeting. We used last year because of the pandemic. We couldn't stage them at the VA hospital. Uh, we staged them at the Marion Junior High School parking lot, which seemed to work really well. Um, and I'll get a hold of my, my committee members tonight, Tom Cadella, who's in charge of that part. Uh, the other staging area for walkers and some of the vehicles and floats is out at the uh, Marion Junior High School. And we just ask that anybody who's going to be in this parade to be out there to at least do me a favor and let me know. My, my phone number will be advertised, my uh, email address. Uh, let me know so I can put you in the lineup. I do a lineup. We don't just get, get a bunch of people with cars and come on down and throw you in the line. There's a, a system that we have so that we get everybody in the parade in the, in the right format. Uh, we don't want walkers and then have riders and then walkers and have riders because uh, it slows up the parade. So just uh, kind of register to participate in the parade. And uh, even if you come five minutes before the parade, if you're a veteran, you're in the parade. Okay. Any questions on behalf of the uh, council or anybody in the audience? None. Oh, come on, Terrence. I think Nothing. you did a good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave my cards with the city council here. So if you know the city council, or you want, and anybody else wants a card, I'll be more than happy to give you one. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job, Ed. All right. Okay. We'll move on to item number three on the agenda, which is our public comments and audience to visitors. It would appear we've got several here tonight that may want to speak, and I'll uh, preface this time by if you are planning on speaking to the council and you're new to this process donnie i know you're not new to the process so you don't this doesn't apply there's this ordinance that's up on the counter i think it's next to that flower arrangement right there on the corner and if you're going to address the council i'd ask you to pick up a copy of this on the corner before you address the council make sure you understand the content of that ordinance so i give you guys a chance to do that Okay, so uh, I'll let those read that that have a chance, and then uh, is there anybody that are, has already read it that wants to address the council? Donnie? Okay, so, so I'll try to order these thoughts. These thoughts are, I had a certain amount, a certain, certain things I was going to speak about, but I, they've kind of had to be adjusted with all the activity going on uh, to maybe communicate a little more uh, properly or a little more effectively. But um, so I'll just start out, you know, I, you know, you say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and, you know, I'm not I'm not against that at all. But I pledge my allegiance to the good book, firstly. And so the first thing about the uh, this Psalms 119, 105, you know, come to my mind several times. And it just says that the Lord, the good book is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So you can see. The good book enables you to see what's going on. And I, I wrote down, you know, there's a lot of things going on around us. And I put, things are drip. I, I, this, I put this down, you know, in a large print. Legitimate offenses have occurred. That's why people do anything. There's been, a le, there's been legitimate offenses. It, it, that, and so that's just a reality. People are not driven to, do, to protest and whatever just because they'd rather do something else. 
I've been protesting for over three years. And uh, you uh, believe me. You should believe me because I tell the truth. There has been legitimate offenses committed against me, but that's not unusual. In life, there are offenses that are going to come. The, the, the Lord said that. It's a, you can't stop it. There's going to be offenses that come, but then you need to handle those properly. And when people don't feel like those are being handled properly, there's an intense amount of frustration. Can you feel me? I've got frustration about things too. And that's why it's good to have. And so then here, okay, I'm going to get to my notes. And so like they talk about divisions on, you know, the p politicians, they say, well, we're trying to bridge the division. Well, they're not trying to bridge the divisions. They're, they're making the divisions. And so one thing that helps the divisions to be bridged, can you hear me? I mean, this, we're all in this together. If there ain't something wrong with you right or if you're not dealing with something right now, you get, you get ready to. Are you following me? Oh, they're, looking, they're real good looking. Well, not for long. That's just the reality of life. Can you hear me? Okay. So anyway, divisions. This is one of, the, one of my topics. I had many topics, many things to say, but we'll stick to what. And so uh, divisions, there's a us and them mentality. Oh, well, well, we've been treated wrong by this group. Well, that's got to be kind of adjusted. And when you think about it, we're all in this together. That can kind of remedy that, bri that, that gap, that gap can bridge that gap. And so, and I, I'm, I just mentioned, you're dealing with something or, or getting ready to deal with something. Everyone. Everyone in here. You're either dealing with something right now or you're getting ready to deal with something. You're, your hair's not thick enough. Or you're not tall enough. Or you're too fat. I mean, that's just a reality. There's something everyone's dealing We're all in this together. And to act like it's us and them, it's a strategy to... It's just not reality. Two minutes, Tony. Two minutes. Two minutes to go or two minutes in? Two minutes to go. Okay. Three minutes in. All right. Fa okay. And so you can also bridge this by faith. Faith is confident. Now, here's a definition for faith. Faith, faith, faith. Faith is a confidence in the truth. You can move mountains with faith. So whatever's coming against you, you if you have faith, you can move the mountain. Well, I've been treated unjustly. Well, join the club. In the good book, it says the whole city's come out to the Lord, and he healed them all, but he healed the whole city. And he said, well, what are you going to do? Uh, what, which of the good works are you going to punish me for? Which of the good works? They nailed him to the cross. After he healed millions, the whole cities? See, there, it's more offensive when you've done right, and then you're treated wrong. If you just are... If you're just uh, selling through life and somebody does you wrong, well, it ain't that offensive. But if you're trying to do right and doing right and doing a lot of right and then you're done wrong and then, said you're, then, then they say that you're doing wrong when you've been doing right, well, that really stinks. It's a hard pill to swallow. Okay. Faith is confidence in the truth. Faith comes by, well, we'll just speak the good book. You know, the devil, he can't handle the good book. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. I hope I got at least a minute left. 30 seconds. No. Romans 10, 17, that comes all the time too. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want to overcome your obstacles? Faith. Hearing the word of God. Okay, 30 seconds. Sometimes you can, you can add 30 seconds to things. Okay. Any questions? The good book. The good book helps you understand. It says, your word, Lord, has given me understanding, and I hate every false way. Well, I hate false ways because I have understanding from the good book. The good book gives you understanding, and you hate false ways. When people are treated improperly, well, you know that's a false way. When they say you should do such and such, the politician get up, and I know it's a false way. But people that don't have the good book, they don't understand it's a false way. Are you following me? The good book gives you the understanding to determine what's a false way or not. That's why people, they're going a certain direction. Hey, don't do that. You're going to go off the cliff because they don't have understanding. Uh, and I'll say this one before I go. It's, it's Isaiah. Uh, 
Isaiah 9, 16, but it just says that the leaders have called the, caused the people to err. A bad leader will cause the people to err. And it says, and they're destroyed that follow them. When you are led by a bad leader, you're going to be destroyed. A bad leader has the, there's a power of influence on a bad leader that causes you to be misdirected and to err. I want my taxes raised. Well, what? That's pretty bizarre. But that you've been led into an error. Any questions? I know my 30 seconds is up. It's up. Okay. And let me just say this real quick. Issues, there's issues. Issues are to be weighed with balance. I mean, when you say whatever, it's out of balance. And it requires courage to, to weigh issues with balance. Wrongs are to be corrected appropriately, not ignored. However, false accusations and embellished accusations must be rightly judged and overcome. Accusing strategy is exercised by darkness to hinder light. Have a good night. That's Revelations 12. The devil always makes accusations to manipulate the situation. Have a good night. Are pretty short. I was expecting to see a lot of people of my skin tone whenever I came in here and I kind of assumed you guys were an equal opportunity employer just like their school, the school board is that is all white. <laughs> um, beyond that I would like to quote a passage myself or I'll just paraphrase it for you. Luke 15. One lamb was left behind. The whole herd was stopped up for it. Amari is one lamb. Do your job. Hi, I'm Darlene Roper. I'm a citizen of Marion. I just want you all to know that the reason we're out here today is to get your attention because you're the faces that represent this city and our children need you right now. It's whenever you allow for situations to come place when you say, do this, do that, and we reaching out to every person you tell us to go speak to, and they're not answering our calls. They're ignoring our emails. They scheduled a, a board meeting today. At the last minute, we had no notice, never got a notice about it. That's why we're here today. Mayor Absher, you're the face of the city. You have to stand up and let it be known like our students matter to you. Black students matter to you too. All students matter. And no racist comments from teachers, students. It says zero tolerance. Zero tolerance in your policy. Teachers is not an exception to that. I have a daughter at the high school. I have a son who's going to follow her right after she leaves. I never want to be that parent to come home, my son to come home, my daughter, to tell me a teacher says something like that to them. And we're just asking you guys to listen. Hear us. Hear us for once. That's all we're asking for. That's why we brought it to you, because you're the faces of this city. You're who we look up to. When we have a problem, we come to the city. The faces. I never met you guys. I don't know nothing about none of y'all, but I've been doing research, and I've been studying what the city council is and what it's for, and that's why I'm here today, and that's why everyone out there is here today, so you guys can listen. Thank you for the time. Hello, my name is Chastity Mays, and I was I just want to speak about the issue at Marion High School. I think it's really important that you understand that you do have to listen to all your students. Um, some people may have g had a good experience with this teacher, but that doesn't mean that it was everyone's experience. This happened. We all know it happened. She has apologized as far as she feels like she's apologized. If I apologize for something or you apologize for something, that means you're admitting to something that you did. 
we have to take into consideration that this is not an isolated incident. There are several people who have came forward who have expressed their same types of issues with this same teacher. So we have to understand that these students should not be made to feel uncomfortable when they're going to school. Every child deserves an education, and in getting that education, they should not feel racism. It's just not right. This student has been asked to rearrange her life for this teacher. She was asked to give up her sport. She was asked to change her entire schedule to make this teacher comfortable when the teacher was the one who said what she said to this student. So why are we causing the student so many issues and not just listening and addressing what needs to be addressed? It's just so important for you to understand these students are your future. They are your future student council leaders. They are your future leadership in the city. You have to listen to every voice. Please make sure you understand that. Thank you so much. Chesty, what was your last name again, please? Mays. Say it again. Mays. Mays. Who's next? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which is items A and B. I, A consists of one through five and just one item in B. Does anybody on the council want any of those items A, one through five, or B, one removed and voted upon separately? Anybody from the audience want any of those items A or B, any of the sub items removed and voted upon separately? Okay entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda. I'd make a motion that we would accept the consent agenda as given. Second that motion. Any questions or discussion on them? Any of them? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item uh, five under new business, street department. Commissioner Webb? Yeah, uh, we've got a uh, recommendation here on the... Uh, Promote uh, Clint Fly to lead man with a salary adjustment consistent with the current collective bargaining agreement effective May 3rd, 2021. Uh, I sit in on interview as well, and I he's a man for jobs, so I'd recommend make that a, a motion. I second that. Okay, any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay, item 5B. Yes, uh, this is resolution 2021-16, uh, approving the 2021 asphalt overlay program. Uh, in summary, uh, really this resolution is to, to uh, uh, approve the MFT portion, which is $620,000, uh, and that, that's the part of the motor fuel tax that we will be using on the asphalt. Um, in addition to that, for the total asphalt program, uh, we're looking at taking $100,000 out of Road and Bridge. Uh, the 620 from the MFT for that is re resolution covers, and then the gas tax will be $395,000. That'll put us at a total of $1,115,000 for the asphalt program for this year. I don't think we've had the letting yet, so we don't know exactly how many miles that'll cover until we see what the prices are. But uh, anyway, I do I put that in the form of a motion to approve uh, this resolution 20 uh, 16. Okay, or second? I would second that. Any questions? Uh, Jim, the 620 is from motor fuel tax. What were the other two items from? Uh, 100,000 and 395. Yeah, 100,000 was from like Road and Bridge, and, uh, which is our uh, local tax to the real estate tax uh, that county collects. Then the <clears throat> gas tax is the uh, 395,000. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 5C? Yeah, that's one other item uh, for the street department. That's the purchase of our bulk paint for road striping of $32,101. Uh, that is a budgeted item. 
uh, uh, the first company he uh, had usually dealt with uh, couldn't source the paint. It's kind of like other commodities right now, hard to get, but he was able to locate this from Sealmaster in St. Louis. So that would be my uh, motion is to approve this $32,101 uh, for the paint for the road striping. I'll second that. How many vendors did you say bid on? Just one? Yeah. Just had one? Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 6A, Commissioner Barwick? Yes, uh, we had uh, Sergeant uh, Griffin that retired the first of the month, and we I uh, want to, she wants to be a school security officer and uh, we want approval. I'll make it in the form of a motion that we'd approve recommendation of the chief to hire Kathleen Griffith as school security officer. I'll second. Any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner mm -hmm. Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. I'm going to skip ahead to number eight real quick. I know we got several items, five under Treasury, but Josh just walked in and, and he's on his family time. So if you don't mind, I'm going to call 8A to the agenda. And Josh, could you come up to the podium and discuss this with us, please? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> so this is a bid to uh, create a glass en enclosure on the second floor. It's where there was former, or formerly a lobby area with a couch and a table with some chairs there. Um, my office will relocate to that location, and the area that was the main office will become a, uh, a production office. Um, touring companies and touring groups require a production office on their technical writer. And typically we don't have that space and we have to set them up in a dressing room or something like that. And so we can't adequately fulfill their riders. Um, the other uh, thing that this space will be is a staff uh, meeting room as well. Um, the alternate uh, reason for this is my former office was the original ticket booth um, and with uh, with everything that's happened with the pandemic, we will be moving uh, Derek Hamblin into that office and he will actually be selling through the ticket windows to uh, create a barrier during the daytime uh, when he's selling tickets. Are you doubled up in your office sometimes yes. now? Are you? Yeah. He's got a lot of equipment and a lot of stuff. It's a real small office that he's currently in now. So this moves you upstairs, Josh. It does. And it is, there are two existing walls, and then you're adding two walls to form right. a, to form the room. Two walls and a door to form the room. Gotcha. And in, in keeping it, the idea is to use glass so that it still appears as a somewhat open space mm -hmm. with the transparency. Um, and not alter the original design all that much as far as spaciousness of the lobby whenever you walk in the door and you look upstairs. <coughs> is this the only bid that you got? It is the only bid that I received. Um, the two glass companies here in Marion um, did not follow through with either bidding or quoting anything or didn't show up for meetings. Uh, to look at the space um, after multiple attempts with both. Um, this is the only one that I ended up with. I think there is going to be a ceiling on this office. There is a ceiling on the office already. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the HVAC will be okay? And you won't be HVAC straight. will be okay. There's already a, a vent in that area. You guys have any more questions of Josh while he's here? So the other two companies that <coughs> I guess did they come and even look at it? No. And that would have been Marion Glass, I'm assuming. Marion Glass and Randy Jones Glass. Um, Marion Glass 
spoke to me once and then um, didn't return four different phone calls inquiring about further action. Um, and then Randy Jones, after three or four weeks, returned a phone call and then didn't show up for uh, to look at the space the first time or the rescheduled appointment. In all fairness, both of them said that they have all kinds of work with how booming the construction industry is right now, and mm -hmm. they're very busy, which is wonderful. But. I would make a motion to approve the bid from the Glass Doctor for office build out on the second floor at the Civic Center for the mm -hmm. amount of $16,600. Second that. I've got one question on yes, that sir? before I vote. When you did meet with them, is there, this is kind of all just Big description and then just yeah. one line item. It's not broken. Is there anything right. here that would cause this, to, in your mind, to exceed this cost or anything? Any contingencies with it or anything? That... There are not. We talked through every detail that I could imagine that we needed okay. to. Okay. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, gentlemen. Steve, you're up. Okay, I think 7A is a routine thing we do each year to designate a whole list of banks that we may deposit money with, although we don't right, typically. May. Yeah, we haven't done it in a few years, and with changes in banks and names changing, it's basically just updating to reflect the name changes and new banks within, uh, within town. It's not that we have money with them or will, but it, in case we, you know, it, it would work out that we uh, could when we already have permission from, have permission from the council to do so. Okay. Doug, you want to make these motions? Yeah, I would make the uh, motion to adopt resolution 2021-15, which is designation, designating depositories. I would second that. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. I'll abstain. Item 7B. Um, I guess you want to come up and explain this a little bit yeah. too with Steve as to what exactly is going on here? Uh, statutorily, the ETSB requires one of the participating treasurers to over have some oversight of the funds that we have. Uh, we started out with Williamson County, had a little bit of a falling out with them over getting checks written. Uh, we pulled away from them and hired a private CPA to do it. Uh, I've spoken with my uh, controlling authority, which is Cindy Beebe at the state level. Uh, she said any of the treasurers involved can do this. Um, basically, what I'll do is forward all the financials to Steve. If he wants anything else, he's, he's basically going to look at the accounting methods, make sure he doesn't have a problem with it. He does not have to be a 911 specialist. That's what they're paying me to do. Um, He'll look at the funds, he'll look at the POs, and he'll make sure that the balances are all correct. If he spends more than 20 or 30 minutes a month on it, he's probably working too hard. <laughs> Does the county have any problem with us at all? No. With us doing this? No. Steve, do you have any problem with, is it, is it going to cost you more than 20 or 30 minutes a month in your opinion? Well, I'm not sure until I actually do, to be quite honest. But yeah, I have made a list of the, all the items I want. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very familiar, uh, familiar with the accounting firm who's currently doing the work. They do a very good job. So yes, I don't think it's going to take me very much time to go through the materials, uh, that I have to have. Okay. Doug, you want to make a motion? Yes. I will make a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreements with the city of Heron and the Williamson County Joint ETSB for oversight of the board's finances. Second that. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Yay. Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Item 7C. Steve, what's, thank you, DJ. Thank you. What's, uh, yes, this, what's this ordinance about? Now, this is for the, um, Brent is uh, needing uh, we need to borrow about seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars for the uh, 
Martin South Market Street extension and also the, uh, the, uh, the improvements to the industrial park lift station. Uh, sent bids out and got uh, three bids, one from uh, First Southern at 2.6 something, one from uh, Vantera at 2.4. Uh, with the for and those are straight loans. Uh, the lease agreement then for with uh, U.S. Bank Corp was uh, 2.13 uh, percent. So you know it's a little bit more hassle to do the lease uh, the lease agreement, but over a 10-year period we're going to save close to $7,400. What's the benefit to the bank doing it as a lease? The, uh, I, know, I know it really doesn't make that dif big a difference with us because the Right. These are not, um, are, there aren't any really fees with the lease agreement that wouldn't be on a, a purchase agreement or a, a loan agreement, right? That's correct, so yes. what's the advantage to the bank? They just use it, I, I think they that use it to funnel all of their tax-exempt oh. um, okay. loans through there, and they do it as capital leases. Okay. I think that's why it is so they can get a lower rate, and then they, don't, then they take the advantages of it being a tax-exempt. Uh, uh, you know, for their taxes. But from our standpoint, I mean, it's just an alternative way of financing it. Correct? Exactly right. Exactly. Okay. And we've done these in the past, and they've worked right. out just fine. I'd make a motion then to approve Ordinance 3728, approving a lease funding agreement with U.S. Bank for funds dedicated to South Market sewer extension and improvements to the industrial park lift station. For a second. I'll second that. Any other questions on this item? 7C? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? No. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Well, I gotta ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's not against the project itself, it's the my experiences with US Bank. Okay, fair enough. Yay. Thought maybe you're going to blow up the whole thing. No, no. <laughs> okay, item 7D. Um, Steve, explain this one. Please. Right, what it is, since this is, they're doing exempt lease agreement, and technically what will happen is we will, since we're going to spend the funds and then request the money from them, uh, they believe it, it, they fall, it falls under an IRS statute, which basically, which applies in most cases to bond issues where if you're going to spend money before you get the bond issue, IRS requires you to, to complete this resolution disbursement saying that you're going to reimburse yourself with tax exempt uh, proceeds. And it's just something that U.S. Bank is going to require to do since we are saying we're going to pay it, you reimburse us versus you directly paying uh, the vendor. Because I feel like we, we get a quicker turnaround in my office, get the vendor paid, and then get our money from uh, the bank. They, what they'll do, they'll, they'll put it in an escrow account and then just disperse it to us. The, the only change I, I, I caught that I wanted to make is that I decided to go ahead and put the water tower in here too, since we've already got the money for that from U.S. Bank. And on uh, section three, where it says maximum amount, I request that we change that from 760,000 to 1,960,000. That adds into 1.2 million we already have. That way then this one will take care of both of those lease agreements. What was the total again, Steve? 1,960,000. So, Tammy, you make note of that. We'll need to change that. Before yeah, I apologize I for not execute. catching that before. I just noticed it while ago. Okay, so everybody see that change in this resolution, Section 3? So a motion and a vote to pass this would include a modification of Section section 3 from seven sixty to $1,960,000, as Steve explained. I'll make that motion to... Adopt resolution 2021-17 expressing the official intent regarding certain capital expenditures to be reimbursed from proceeds of an obligation to be issued by the city of Marion, which my motion does include the one change. Okay. I'll second that. 
Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Barwick? Yes. Commissioner, I'm oh, sorry, Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yes. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Uh, item 7E, um, I'll shorten this discussion a little bit. This is, I'll fall on the sword on this one. So I'm constantly going to Steve going, how much is in? So the financial statements of any company, including ours, this one, corporation, you've got financial statements that talk about money coming in and money coming out, but then you've got balance sheet items that sort of total up the sum, think of that checking account balance or whatever. This software package that we've got, which this was an add-on with, I think, uh, Abila before as well, right? Abila? Well, I mean, we already have all this in, in our accounting package, but, and when we come with the balance on the balance sheet section, where we're now setting up so we have the balance sheet, but we need to be able to get that updated daily like we do the revenues and, and, uh, and expenses. Right now they have an easy import function where we are able to import very quickly due to, due to some really good work done by Alex McCree, uh, the way he set it up with some macros, and, and, and that information can go in really fast. Their, their balance sheet is not quite set up that way, and, th and, and that first change on the balance sheet would be for them to change it at our request so then we can import that information, the balance sheet information, just the way we do the revenue and expense. And that way then it's just a, in, in just a couple of minutes we have it imported every night. And that's what we do right now for the revenue and expense. We import what we've done in the accounting package every night. We import that into uh, Questica. So Questica is constantly updated every day. So you have the most current information. This way then you'd have the most current information with the balance sheet also. Okay. Well, I know this costs a little bit of money, but it will save me asking a thousand questions. <laughs> if that helps you yeah. at all. And, and then the second one is, is on our budget reporting. What it's gonna allow us to do is to be able to, not only when you see the budget document, when we have it at the end of the year and just shows revenue and expense, with this, with this change, we'll be able to put in our fund, balance, our fund balances too. That way then not only will you see revenue and expense, but you'll be, you'll be able to see in each fund what the beginning fund balance is and, and then what the projected uh, ending fund balance is. So it gives, gives you more information. I think the more information you have, the better decisions you can make. Well, that would be my motion to approve the two modifications to Questica to include fund balances and balance sheet activity imports for a maximum of $4,050 each, totaling a potential, potential of $8,100 in one-time charges. These are non-budgeted items. I'll second that. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Barwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner Stecklin? Public Works. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, just a little background on this one. Um, where this is located is around the area of perfect, perfectly posh. Uh, they've been experiencing sanitary sewer backups for quite some time. And they looked into it and said that the main needs replaced and the service connection needs to be modified to correct this. Otherwise, it's going to keep happening. So uh, the bid we've got is from Scuda Construction for $16,880. And basically what that will do is repair the sewer main located in the alley between 100 block of South Liberty and South Monroe. And this will be used using TIF funds to pay for that project. So you'll see it in your packet that it also includes two manholes in case we need them. So and they reconnect. So I guess you put that in mo my motion would be to approve the bid from Scuda Construction for repair of sewer main located in the alley between 100 block of South Liberty and South Monroe using TIF funds. I was like, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I missed it. What's the joke? No joke. Okay. I said it kind of twice. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Berwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. And Mayor Absher? Yay. Under Public Affairs 10A, uh, it's my motion to approve the hire, retroactive hire of Kylie Gold to the position of Deputy City Clerk at $21 per hour, full time, non exempt, effective May 10th, 2021. I would second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton? Yay. Commissioner Berwick? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Stecklin? Yay. Mayor Absher? Yay. Item 10B um, is 
I'll make the motion first to approve a project agreement with White and Borgnoni Architects for design and management of the City Hall renovation project. I will point out to you, it's actually more than just with White and Borgnoni. Hope I'm saying Borgnoni correct. <coughs> uh, somebody correct me if I'm not. There's a substantial amount of mechanical engineering that has to go into this when I'm talking about replacing the boiler, the electronics, or electrical system, the plumbing system. And so, um, especially with rising commodity prices and things like that, I asked for a fixed price contract, which I thought was the best route for us to go as opposed to it floating as a percentage of the total, since we don't quite yet know what that's going to be. And the longer we wait, I think the higher that's going to be. But, um, at first glance, it seems like a, a chunk, but I just want to point out to you just how much of this has to do with mechanical engineering because it's we were over there again today trying to figure out how to get HVAC in the places that we need HVAC. So there's just a lot of um, kind of typical with 100-year-old buildings and making modern mechanicals go in there. So I just wanted to point that out to you. So... Mayor, I have one question. 11.8.2 on reimbursable expenses in this thing. I mean, I understand reimbursable expenses, but it's reimbursable plus 5%. Is there a reason that we add 5% to a reimbursable expense when we've got the actual cost? Just a question. How about we just cross that out? I just, I mean, when I turn in my expense report, my company does not give me an extra 5%. They pay me what I spent. I think is. this issue, it's, I mean, we can cross it out, and I'm going to prove it without that. I think the way this reads is incurred by the architect and the architect's, architect's consultant, so I'm assuming they're adding something for the problem of billing it and trying to collect it and all that, but overhead. just mm -hmm. overhead stuff. But we can approve it without it. I think, have you ever heard this is just a standard contract before? I've heard that. I'm pretty sure this is standard language, so if there's something in there you want to... Standard contract is how things get snuck in, though, so that's why. <laughs> Where's Wendy? That's a famous art. I said there's no such thing. There isn't? <laughs> I was always told to run when somebody said that. But. Exactly. That means don't plan. Yeah. Uh, Fendrick Engineering, what is their role in this? Is that also mechanical? Structural. Structural? Structural engineer. Okay. And Limp Elevator. That seems really light to me. Like that's just the engineering cost money. problem. That's the engineering. Yeah, yeah that's not the cost. Well, so, they we, have St. Louis. we actually think we got lucky, believe it or not, on the elevator project, the way, which I know we haven't got to present this yet because it's just not all solid, but that building is actually two different buildings with three different levels, Four if you will, on two different floors. So they were able to position it in such a way that we'll be able to use one of those pre-engineered elevators, which saved us a ton okay. in the engineering costs. Okay. And it's going to be a lot more aesthetically pleasing and we'll actually be able to get to every floor. But so, so the one elevator will serve all levels. Awesome. Yeah. So it's got three floors on each building and none of them line up. None of the floors <laughs> well, it's the old Western Auto building yeah. is what was that westmost building so that was a real challenge but that's why the elevator engineering isn't all that much is okay. they will be able to cut holes and all of that and literally slip a pre-engineered elevator all the way down through there that's good news yeah it is very good news and it eliminates one elevator altogether <clears throat> i need a second on this i'll second any other questions roll call please commissioner Patton. yay commissioner barwick yay commissioner webb yay Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Is this, uh, this is not trivia night, is it? It's not. Dang Sorry. it. One of these days I'll remember. It's not. Well, you get to go first anyway. Okay. Um, since last meeting, the Water Department report is we've had four new service taps. There are five leaks have been repaired and five services have been renewed and updated. And just a little, this isn't really trivia, but remember 12 years ago this past weekend, uh, May 8th, the city of Marion, along with other towns in Illinois, encountered what some would call an inland hurricane, while others called it a derecho. 
Either way, it had devastating effects, but like all Southern Illinoisans, when times got difficult, everybody pulled together to help out one another. So I just want to commend everybody again for the, for the uh, everything that was done back 12 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been 12 years. That's all I've got. Commissioner Patton, you got anything? Uh, no, I don't. I think we covered everything I needed in the uh, item seven. Okay. Mr. Barwick. Yes. Uh, from the fire department uh, for the month of April, we show 15 fire calls, one 200 series explosion call, 11 <coughs> series rescue and EMS calls, nine hazardous conditions with no fire, 12 service calls, 14 good intent calls, 12 activated alarms for a total of 74, uh, 12 annual safety inspections were completed. And that's all I've got for the one more item here. Uh, during the month of April, uh, for the fires, they used a total of 1,890 gallons of water. We'll bill you for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marion Police Department activity report for the month of April. There were 50 city ordinance violations, 12 warrant arrests, 404 incidents reported, 144 traffic accidents, and 10 DUIs. Dispatch calls, uh, 4,565. 911 calls were 4,815. 462 ambulance calls. The Marion Police Department Narcotics Unit for the month of April, they had 29 cases initiated, total of 24 arrests, five controlled substance, uh, drug purchase of methamphetamine, three search warrants, one firearm, 79 grams of crystal ice methamphetamine, 20 pounds of cannabis, 8.5 grams of cocaine, 10 prescription tablets, and $4,063 was seized for asset forfeiture. <clears throat> the Marion Police Department Detective Unit had seven burglary cases, one counterfeit case, two damage to property cases, five death investigations, one home invasion, two sex offenses, three threat theft of motor vehicles, four theft under, six unlawful use of weapons, and five vehicle burglaries for a total of 36 for the month of April. Animal control for the month of April had a total of 271 calls. They had 17 citations that were written, three investigations, five total emergency calls after hours, 72 total animals taken in, eight animals reclaimed, 36 animals rescued, and one adoption. And one more item. This is National Police Week. So if anyone sees any of our officers out, give them a wave, say hi to them. Um, our officers do a tremendous job, not only the police, the Marion Police <coughs> Department, the county, state police, and We'd like to honor them this week. Um, it just infuriates me the way that uh, our officers are being treated nationwide and even here locally. Um, so I'll leave it at that, but kudos to our police officers. Mr. Webb. Yeah, uh, street crews uh, pouring sidewalks on Calumet, Thorn, and Virginia streets. Uh, we've sent five uh, uh, five people out to help with the weed eating at the cemetery. So uh, hopefully with the dry weather this week, uh, we'll get, get a lot of the weed eating caught up out there. So uh, it's getting ready, things ready for Memorial Day. Uh, <clears throat> also patching a lot of roads and potholes. I, I got behind one of the patching crews today, so they're doing a good job. We still have a lot of d uh, damage from the winter that we're trying to uh, get caught up. So things are looking good there. Uh, cemetery, like I say, they're just uh, weed eating and mowing and trying to get things looking nice for Memorial Day. So appreciate their job out there. That's all I got. 
Okay, I've got a report from the Senior Citizen Center from Jill, the director. They served 3,664 meals in April. They also began outdoor activities again, including parking lot bingo, which is Tuesday afternoons at 1, and out, outdoor line dancing, which takes place every Wednesday from 10 in the morning to 11.30. She did want me to say that they are searching for a... Uh, 60 plus senior in our community to lead a weekly walk beginning at the senior citizen center going around the square through the new mural district and ending up back at the senior citizen center so if anyone's interested in leading that walking club group once per week or even in participating in any of these other activities she asked you to contact her jill at 997-9019 uh, the Senior Center wants to extend a huge thank you to Kelly Norris and all of her staff at the EMA in Williamson County and the Marion Fire Department for the opportunity to fight hunger by sharing their resources and they allowed the Senior Citizen Center to distribute 1,600 pounds of food to the seniors in April. Also uh, thank the Marion Street Department for assisting very impromptu with some delivery of some of these same items at the Senior Citizen Center. We had 96 pounds of 96 boxes of 30 pounds of bananas that just sort of showed up and the street department got them and went bananas. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. On April 15th, the Senior Citizen Center held its second round of Pfizer vaccine for those constituents had received their first and that was thanks to Health Direct Primary Services. They're also working again with the Oasis Drive-In Movie Theater and the Illinois Department of Aging to bring a virtual program to Marion similar to the Rules of the Road that covers uh, how, um, man, I haven't said this word in a long time, how ombudsmen in our state work to resolve complaints made on or behalf of persons who are receiving services through Medicare, Medicaid Alignment Initiative, and older adults and persons with disabilities who received through select home and community-based service uh, waivers. On April 20th, their staff gathered virtually for the ceremony for the 2020 Governor's Hometown Awards, and they are very proud to have represented the City of Marion as winners in the Healthy Futures category. Uh, she says, we have the most dedicated staff who are always up for a challenge, go above and beyond and pour their heart and soul into every meal and project placed before them and for that. We are very thankful. Hats off to everyone who helps us positively impact our community. And I don't know if you guys know, I had to ask several questions when I got here and continue to learn every day, but we are really quite one of the very few communities in Southern Illinois that actually owns and operates its own senior citizen center. So that there we a lot of our people are not necessarily just from Marion. Uh, in many cases, that's one of the few meals some folks get and with in very many cases, some of the only socialization a lot of folks get. So it's appreciated by a lot of people. That's something I did not know. I kind of thought every small town kind of had their own, and, and um, we don't have to. We're blessed to be able to afford to. And uh, just another thing I'm grateful for, for the Senior Citizen Center. So anything else to come before the council in Section 12 under miscellaneous? Okay, I do not, unless you guys have something else I'm not aware of, despite it being listed, I do not have a need for closed or executive session unless you guys do. And hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'd second that. Roll call, please. Commissioner Patton. Yay. Commissioner Barwick. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Stecklin. Yay. Mayor Absher. Yay. Thank you all.